Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to link or group effects parameters on multiple tracks in Reaper. I have a track in front of me here with two acoustic guitars, one pan left and one pan right. Let's hear them. You can tell the parts are very similar but they're not exactly the same. Now, if you want to put an EQ on both of them, but you didn't want to adjust them separately for each track, what I'd recommend for that is creating a folder track. Double click over here, put this above these two, hit this button over here to pop it out. So these two tracks are in this folder. And then we can put the EQ on this track, like the re EQ right here. And this EQ is going to affect both tracks at the same time. But that's not very useful for things like compressors or deessers or any other dynamic effects, as you're going to want each one to react to the different parts. You don't want to just put a compressor on this folder because it'll sound like this. Each track is fighting with the other track, as the threshold on the compressor is reacting to both at the same time. You typically want to compress or DS or use any dynamic effects separately. But the limitation of that is that you can't control both tracks with one threshold. But if you link them, you can. Now the way Reaper works, we can't link effects parameters that are on different tracks. But if we combine them to one track, we can get around that limitation. Let's get rid of this compressor right here. Hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac to delete it. Let's make this no longer a folder and we'll treat this as a bus. So what we'll do We'll select both of these tracks, hold on Alt on the PC, or Option on the Mac, and click the routing button. And that removes both tracks from the master parent sent. So we're not going to hear them, even though they're playing. And then we could bust these two tracks to this one. While they're both selected, hold down Shift, go to the routing button, and just drop it onto this track. And that creates a send for both of these to this track which we can see by opening the routing, they're right over here. So now it functions pretty much like a folder, except we can now separate these sends to different channels. So if we look at this send right here, acoustic guitar left, which is this one, it's sending from one and two, to one and two on this track. And the same thing for guitar left. It's sending from one and two to one and two on this track. So it's basically combining them. But what we want to do is separate them. So let's take the second track and send it to three and four. There is no three and four right now, but we can create one over here on the track channels by adding two more channels. So now this track has four channels. Now I can go down here to the second send and send it to three and four. So if I play it now, we only hear this guitar because we're only hearing one and two on this track. If we want to hear both of them, we need to add a plugin. Let's go to the plugins on this track right here, and let's type in mixer. And right over here, we have an eight times stereo to one times stereo mixer. Let's add it. So now we're mixing in channels one and two, three and four, all the way to 15 and 16 on this track. Now there's only inputs 
for one through four, which we could see if we look at the pins. There's four inputs, but they're both going out one and two. So we should hear both guitars. And we do. In fact, we don't need five and six or the rest. We're just using these two. This way we could hear both tracks. The first guitar coming into one and two, and the second guitar on three and four. So why do we separate these? The reason we did this is so we could add separate effects to each of them. So let's go back to the effects, and let's add a compressor right over here. Let's put this before our mixer, and let's check out the pins on the compressor. We're not going to use the aux inputs on three and four, so we can remove those. So this compressor is going to work on one and two, going out of one and two. So it's only going to work on the left channel. Check it out. If I mute this, there's no signal here. But if we unmute it, we can see it right here. So this compressor is just going to work with the first guitar. So let's add another one for the second guitar. Select it, copy it, and paste it. And let's put this one before the mixer as well. I'm going to change the pins right over here to work with input three and four and make it go out three and four. So this is going to work on the second guitar right here. So if we open them both by floating them, this is the left guitar's compressor, and this is the right guitar's compressor. And they're completely separated, which is the whole point of doing this. With both compressors or plugins on the same track, we can now link them. Let's select the threshold on the second one, just click it, Go to the parameter menu, see last touched threshold, and go over here to parameter modulation or MIDI link. Then we can go over here to link from effects parameter. Choose that, and we can choose either the same compressor right here or the other one, which is the left guitar's compressor right here. So let's choose that one and choose the threshold. So let's move this out of the way. Now if I move the threshold on this one, they move together because they're linked or grouped. So at any point I think it's compressing too much, I could just go to this one and back off a bit. Or if I want to compress more, I could bring it down more. And both of them are going to move together. So we can quickly change the compression on both with one control because they're now linked. And if you want to set them differently, you can just offset it right over here using the offset control. Watch this one right here. Less compression or more compression, and they're still linked. We can put this back to the middle and they'll be set exactly the same. And we can link other parameters as well. Let's do the attack, click this parameter, choose it here, choose to link it over here, and then choose the first compressor and the attack. And we can do the same thing with the release. and choose the release on the first compressor. And now we can adjust the attack on both compressors, or the release, or the threshold. But 
but the important part is it's still compressing completely separately. So this is playing a note, and this one's not, this compressor is not affected by this one's note. So it's still compressing completely separately, but we're linking up the parameters. So they're always set the same. More compression or less. Now you're probably thinking, this is a lot of work to just link up two compressors. But the good part is we could save this to use it again. So we can go to this track right here and right click it, save tracks as track template, and we can name it linking two compressors. Then we could save it. And if we ever wanna do this again, let's delete this track, let's put these tracks, back in the master parent send. What we gotta do is go to the track menu, insert track from template, and go right down to here, linking two compressors. And that creates this new track right here. So we can select these two, take them out of the master parent send, send them by holding down shift to this track, and just go into the returns and switch this to three and four, so it's one and two, and three and four, and it should be set up. And one of the great things about this is we get effects after it, like EQ, that will affect both. If you put them after the stereo mixer, we got a re EQ, which comes after it. So the CQ is going to affect both guitars. <music> Meanwhile, the compressors are completely separate. But the parameters are linked. The threshold, the attack, and the release. So that's pretty much it. That's linking or grouping effects parameters on multiple tracks in Reaper. I hope you learned something, I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh.